mean, if you take a lot of damage, you're going to have a pretty bad pillage, but your bean out frank won't get hurt much. As long as you max them. And like I said, the main things that affect it are the difficulty of the bots and the fact that you've actually maxed them. Here, I've got people are starting to get a bit bored and a couple of people are lazing. I'll just give them a bit of a chance and later on I just ask I just ask them nicely, can you please hop back on stations and do my little hearts and things like that? Like I said, you you've got a lot better chance of people doing what you want if you ask them nicely than if you go mad with the whistles. It's all about job of treatment and things like that. If you have a nice atmosphere, treat them nicely. Yeah, they're, they're going to come back. And it's just basically the essence of doing a good pillage is treating your job as well. I didn't actually notice it, but I just got engaged by a red cutter here. I'm not quite sure how good he was, but... Yeah, I'm having issues with a bit of a map on this one. All the nice spots were too far away, so... I was just I just settled with the spot that was just above me. But again, this is one of the battles where... I didn't end up getting what I wanted, I ended up getting forced to fight in the whirlpool because the cutter just didn't have enough moves. And here you can see th this is one of the spots you'll see quite a lot is where the ship can just sort of the only thing it can do is take double left and just come towards you. So here I just go left forward double left and just sort of attack that general path that the double left swing would give him. And I take a nice early hit on the first turn. So that's one thing that you always want to look out for is that double left or the double right. But if you've got the choice, you want to go for double lefts because obviously they're more likely to have two lefts than they are two rights. Here we've got horsey gals. Just she, she just did some complaint. She did the usual greeny thing. I want to gun. I want to gun. And she just basically called me an asshole. So I just planked her. And when she started sending me tells, I just did the usual thing. I just muted her. It's just not worth the hassle. May as well just mute them and just ignore them. Like I said, even though she's be being bad and acting up, there's no need to try and drag down the rest of the crew, so I just want the rest of the crew to have fun, and if I'm having a tart war with another jobber, then that's going to drag everybody else down, and it's just going to make my page less fun for everyone, really. And there you go, she's just sending me the tails, and I've just muted her. And 
here's the point where I'm just sort of starting to realise I'm not going to get the cutter to follow me to the space that I want. But I'll give him a chance to just sort of move out the wind, but he ends up turning right, so I just end up following him in because he I don't he doesn't have enough moves to go to where I want him to go. Here I was just sort of analysing where we could go in the whirlpool and he ends up going forward or left but I didn't find it likely enough to be worth putting any shots in so I just went left forward. If you really determined to take any chance I could have gone forward again but I didn't really want to. Here I was just aiming for this left hand square of the whirlpool, expecting hit. I mean, you may as well put all four guns in because if he say takes a left on the first turn or a right on the second turn, then he's going to be out of phase. So if you just put the two guns in, you could still potentially miss valuable opportunities. But he ends up going forward and changing his position, so I only get one hit in. Here I'm just think figuring he was put, might turn there's it quite might turn left out of the whirlpool, so I just sort of t spend a couple of hits hoping he's gonna turn left into me basically. But he doesn't end up doing it, and I have to end up chasing him. At this point I just sort of give up on that idea. So rather than do that I end up trying to just sort of move along and try and shoot into the whirlpool from the other side but the spot ends up moving out so I might end up missing. And here I'm in the sort of spot that I don't want to be in. I could go right left, but that has two problems. One, he can grapple me, which I really don't want. Two, I can get, I'm pinned in against the wall, which I don't want. So I just elect to go into the whirlpool and hope he doesn't turn to shoot me. Which I think he ends up doing, but I'm not quite sure. No, he doesn't. And I just want to get a decent spot. I don't want to rush. It's better to risk taking one shot here than rushing and taking several. I hit. Oh, this is where I got hit. I just took the risk of taking one hit and he ends up turning and hitting me. Now that I've got a better spot, I can just sort of come up behind him with rel relatively low risk. I'm not trapped up against the wall this time, and I've, I've got an escape route. I can pull left. 
if I, things go wrong. This is a very important thing when you're going in to try and shoot your bot. It, the thing you have to always think about is do I have a nice escape route if things go wrong? If the answer is no, then you shouldn't be doing that move. You should be repositioning. Which is what I do quite a lot. If I see a good opportunity to hit my opponent but it puts me in a really bad spot I tend not to go for it I'd rather reposition than put myself in a bad situation there you go I'll just slip round to the right and finish off the grapple Again, I just compliment my jobbers, which is something you should really get into the habit of doing. Just have a nice cheery message and just compliment them. Here I have a 